encourage you to take a few moments to read the reports in our book of reports that will give you a detailed update on uh, the work that God has been doing through your mission board staff, through the ministries that you're funding, through the cooperative program that Eliza brought us offering. We have seen God uh, advancing the kingdom in Kentucky, and we praise God for that. Rather than taking time to reference many of those reports, I want to spend the next a few moments sharing with you about the challenges facing the Convention of Southern Baptist Churches that God has placed here in Kentucky. The first thing I want to remind you of this morning is that our mission field is indeed a growing mission field. Census data over the course of the last 40 years indicates that the population of Kentucky has increased by over 1 million people, from 3.2 million to 4.3 million in these past 40 years. We should also keep in mind that our mission field is becoming much more diverse. In addition to the growth in the African American community, we're witnessing the nations coming to us right here in Kentucky. There's been phenomenal growth in the Hispanic immigration all across the United States, and Kentucky is certainly no exception to that. Other nationalities are also on the rise. Taken as a whole, the non-white population of Kentucky has increased nearly 250% in the last 40 years. The growth rate of the non-white population is significantly ahead of the growth rate of the white population. Whites have dropped from 92.7% of the population to 87.8% of the total population as of the 2010 census. That trend will accelerate. That is to say, the Kentucky of the future will be far less white than the Kentucky of today. If Kentucky Baptists are going to reach our state, our Judea for Christ, we must be better positioned to reach the growing African American, Hispanic, and ethnic populations of our state. To further understand the magnitude of our Lord's Great Commission challenge here in Kentucky, consider that according to estimates from the North American Mission Board, 65% of Kentuckians do not have a personal saving relationship with Jesus Christ. If anything, I'm convinced that estimate is low. But even that low estimate reveals to us that nearly three million Kentuckians are lost and destined for hell if they do not place their trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives. These are our neighbors. These are our co-workers. These are our friends and members of our own families of every color. How effectively are we reaching our mission field here in Kentucky? Consider this. As the total population of Kentucky has increased 1.1 million people in the last 40 years, the total number of Kentucky Baptist churches has increased by roughly 200. To put that into perspective, while our population has increased more than 25%, the number of KBC churches has increased only 8%. Here's another way of understanding the challenge that faces us. The current ratio of KBC churches to lost people in Kentucky is roughly 1 to 1,600. When you stop to consider that the average KBC church has a Sunday morning attendance of 72, that helps you understand the challenge facing Kentucky Baptists in reaching our state. With a growing population, with church planting not keeping pace, and with the increasing opportunity and challenge of ethnic ministry, how are our churches doing at partnering together to accomplish the Great Commission in Kentucky and around the world? Partnership is best understood in basic statistical analysis by how we allocate our resources. Over the past 30 years, annual and designated receipts for our churches have tripled from $100 million dollars the total in 2010 of over $320 million on designated receipts and the offering plates of Kentucky Baptist Convention churches. During that same time span, cooperative program giving increased from approximately $9 million to about $22 million. And that tells us that undesignated receipts tripled over the past 30 years and CP doubled. What have the percentages done? comparing those undesignated receipts to cooperative program giving. 20 years ago, churches were giving an average of 11% of their undesignated receipts to the cooperative program. Last year, that fell to a low of 6.8%. 
that drastic reduction in partnership and the allocation of resources to partnership, along with the desire of Kentucky Baptists to commit more of our CP resources to those nations without a gospel witness, is about to have a dramatic impact upon the ministry of the Kentucky Baptist Convention. On the upside, and the good news is, if you've been following the reports coming from your mission board, Kentucky Baptist this year positioned to fund 22 new missionaries to the nations if we meet our cooperative program giving goals. That's simply the result of the reallocation of resources that has come from the Great Commission Task Force report being adopted at our convention last year. So we are excited about our opportunity to see more missionaries through the International Mission Board of the Southern Baptist Convention get the gospel to the nations. In addition to the potential to see those 22 more personnel out on the fields overseas, uh, there is also a greater investment being made in missionaries serving through the North American Mission Board, in the education of the next generation of ministers through our seminaries, and in all the other work that Kentucky Baptists and Southern Baptists have undertaken together. But to come back to the impact here in our state, to state it plainly, if CP gifts from our churches do not significantly increase, we simply cannot continue to fund all of the ministries and programs that we have funded in the past through our mission board. Nor will we be able to continue to support our institutions and agencies to the degrees that we have supported them in the past because we simply can't spend money we don't have. The time has come for Kentucky Baptists to make hard decisions, to ask of the things that matter to us what matters most. How will we continue to allocate resources uh, knowing that they are shrinking and knowing that the needs are growing? Since I have time on the program this evening, uh, I won't go into great details on uh, the challenge uh, that that question brings us, but instead I want to leave you this morning with three very important requests. And I trust you'll give consideration to each of these requests. My first request is that you would pray with me. That you would ask God to clearly reveal his vision for our future as a convention. Nothing I've shared with you in the PowerPoint slides or in my verbal report is a surprise to our omniscient Heavenly Father. Nor is it outside of his sovereign reign over creation or beyond the reach of his omnipotent hand. Pray that God will show us what our ministry as a convention of churches should entail in the coming years. What must we keep doing? What must we stop doing? What must we prioritize in terms of our investment of resources? We want God's guidance. We desperately need his vision. Second, I want to ask you to reacquaint yourselves and your congregation with the ministries of the cooperative program. Find out and help your church members know how the money is being spent because I think I can safely say most of them don't know. It never ceased to amaze me when I was serving as chairman of the Mission Personnel Committee of the International Mission Board and we were interviewing uh, prospective candidates to serve as Southern Baptist missionaries overseas, it never ceased to amaze me how little those candidates knew about the cooperative program. Uh, these were men and women, many of them who had grown up as boys and girls in Southern Baptist churches. Uh, many of them had attended uh, Baptist colleges. Most of them had spent at least some time in the classroom of our Southern Baptist seminaries. Uh, these were our missionaries to be. And yet, their understanding, many of them, of the very funding mechanism that God would use to support them was incredibly, incredibly small. And in fact, we had to take extra time to help them understand so they could go out and communicate to the churches uh, as they shared with them about the work that God was doing how they were being provided for, how they were being funded. When I think about this vehicle that God has used 
to accomplish the work that he has been doing through Southern Baptists over the course of these decades. The hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars every decade that has come to be committed to God's kingdom work and how poor our stewardship of that has been just in terms of understanding it and educating our people. It should be no surprise uh, to me or any of us that cooperative program giving is shrinking in our day. And so my simple challenge to you is that uh, you would join us in helping educate uh, your churches and the ministries of the cooperative program and coming to understand them if uh, you would like to invest more in things like church planting and education and educating the next generation of ministers and having a gospel witness on our university campuses and funding missionaries to reach uh, the thousands of immigrants here in Kentucky and getting the gospel to the nations and all of the other things funded through the cooperative program. That is to say, if your church decides they want to do more for Christ in partnership through the cooperative program, then we will celebrate that. If, however, your church prayerfully decides uh, that uh, understanding the cooperative program, that your current level of partnership and commitment is what they choose to maintain, then we will celebrate what God continues to do through your church and in our partnership. I simply ask you to be informed, help your people be informed, and join us as we continue to partner together. Third. I want to encourage you to take advantage of those ministries that you're funding. If you need help with a strategy to teach stewardship in your church, call us. If you want to lead your church to engage the lost in Kentucky through church planting, let us help you. If your deacon ministry needs a shot in the arm, we have the needle. If you are ready to adopt an Acts 1 8 mission strategy and need something that fits your church, we have a tailor. If you want to know how to witness to the owner of the Chinese restaurant in your town. We can train you to that end. If you're looking for a camp experience for your youth group that's top quality but doesn't mean busing them halfway across the country, we have it right here in Kentucky. How on earth do you reach your college students in this day and age? We'll show you. If your youth minister or children's minister is trying to figure out what in the world to do now that they have just taken on uh, this charge, Send them to us. We will give them direction. Men who have decades of experience, who stay on the cutting edge of training, can surely help. Take advantage of these ministries that you find. You see, together we are the Kentucky Baptist Convention. And together we stand side by side to answer God's call on our lives and as a convention of churches until we stand side by side before his throne and in front of the Lamb with that great multitude crying out, salvation belongs to our God and to him who sits on the throne. Thank you for your partnership. And may the Lord continue to use me and you and the churches of Kentucky to increase his glory. God bless you.